Next up. Hello, my name is Khalif Ooh. Sellers, representing my. You sound like the quiet store. <laughs> Hello, my name is Khalif. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Give me my Go ahead. My name is Kali Sellers, representing Mob Top Dance Fusion and Effect. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sir Edward of Flatbush. <laughs> Hi, kids. Today's word is. Remember that? Yeah. All right. Um. We're going to talk about different things that happened in a few years and did not happen in a few years. Topics that kind of disturb people in a few years. Um, how do you feel about the change in the hip hop between 95 and now? Mm, that's a long time. Yeah. Wow. Because you were there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm asking. Wow. 95 until now. Why not? A lot of thing, a lot of things change. Hip hop change. Why ninety five? I just like that. that oh, year. okay. Oh. Year? <laughs> Let's see, ninety five. Big year. Big year just dropped. Yes. Yeah. Um, Terry we, just got down. That was his first video. Yeah. And we we had a single out. At the yep. time. We That's when we saw about still the doing the ten theme. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 It just dropped. Let's see, well, nineteen ninety five. We went back to Japan for the second time. Hmm. It was a good mm. year. We did Mariah. Great, great year. Nice, nice, nice year. But I mean, Fantasy. if you if you want to talk about the change, change, change in the dance, oh, the, change the change in the, in the dance. dance. Mm. You know, you guys like performed dance with a you know a lot of artists, and that change, that dancing culture, change to the battle culture. Mm. It's like the battle is the new generation stage to meet you guys and you guys dance for people that you know were like not to be rich for the normal dancers you understand what i mean that's more like 2002 right yeah uh 95 i don't remember very many battles yeah yeah no battles in 95. that's what i mean yeah. the battles were in the clubs no 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 wait 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 there were battles but it was more like choreography battles in japan okay they had battles. Dance the light. Dance the light. There was battles in Japan, but in the States, no. There was no battles. It was more like just dancing free in the club. When you battle, you had a reason. There was a reason for the battle. Like, I don't like you. <clears throat> like, I don't like you, or You're we got whack. the same name. Something, somebody got you the name up. There was a reason for the battle. Now, the reason for the battle is Money. Money and trophy. So it promised to change. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Mm. I think, I, okay. Me, okay. I feel the battle is handicapping dancers. Reason why? Because they get the battle to one song. When we battled, you had to battle if the DJ changed the song, the DJ was scratching in the song, you had to battle. Wait, can I interject? Let's stop here. These are not battles. They're contests. Battles do not have judges. Battles do not have time limits. Battles do not have people cheering. People are watching to see what the hell is going on. So let's be clear. These are contests. They're not battles. A battle is when you call someone out and you either wax them or they wax you and you dance until somebody gives up. And nine times out of ten, when you battle, you weren't in your neighborhood. You were in someone else's neighborhood, or you were in a place that was foreign to you. So you basically had to like win out the crowd in order to win the battle. But you know, it was basically your word versus the other person's word. Who, as a, as a, in regards to who won. So you saying from two thousand, right? No. Juice the Boo starting in two thousand two. Yeah. yeah. So then a lot of things changed. Yes, it did. All right? How do you feel about Juice de Boo, about the contest? Me, I, I think that it's, it's a good thing because it exposed more people to the stand-up dance. 
Whereas most people didn't know or they didn't care, especially about house. Most people didn't know anything about it because they just all grouped, they grouped everything together. Uh, for years, people were saying, you're a break dancer, you're a b-boy. You know, I tried to do that, but the style that I do is different. You know, it has some of the elements in it, but it's different. And when people got to see Just the Boo, for the first time, they got to see that dance. It was, they were being exposed to it here in Europe. Whereas in Asia, they, they were already, they already knew about the style. What is rich? Uh, for me, I think it's, uh, as with all things, it's yin and yang. Uh, as he, as Khalif stated, it, the great part is the exposure of stand-up dance, as you call it, and people getting to understand the difference between uh, the stand-up dances and b-boying, per se. Uh, for me personally, the yang of it is now, as you said about the battles, People dance for battles. They don't dance for the music, you know? The difference between the greatest dancers and the half-assed dancers is people like Salah would dance if there was no battles. As long as you play music, he's going to dance because he loves the music, you know? And I think that is getting lost. People are trying to memorize every track and they're trying to get, you know, all their moves together to win a battle instead of expressing themselves to the music, how the music makes you feel. Because without the music, there are no battles. So, and no dance. So how, how do you want to change that? Is there a way to change that? Because you guys, I mean, isn't that where the workshop comes in for you to teach the people the knowledge and well, teach the that's culture? an entirely different conversation because because of the battles now, you have people teaching workshops who really should be in class and not be teaching. You know, I've watched people win a battle one year and they took, they start teaching class, master classes in like the next month. Um, in order to teach a particular style, you have to first know the style because you've won a battle does not mean you know the style. You know, I can't walk into a class and teach ballet, and I've studied ballet. I, I know the terminology, I know the history of it. I can't do it, but you know, I guess if I won a ballet battle, I could teach ballet tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> True. I, I liken it. I liken it to martial arts. It, it takes like ten years to become a master. Right. So. so but going back to the battles, right? So it has become, to a lot of people, like a commercial thing. Yeah. And like you're saying, uh, it, has brought, it, it has two sides of it, a good side and a bad side. But if you look at it, it has made the hip hop very big nowadays. Right? It has given us, all of us, a chance to travel around the world and teach people give them what we want. Of course, we all do in our own way how we want to teach the people. Everybody has his own way. But I think, personally, if it wasn't for, you know, events like Juste de Boo, most of us would not be, you know, uh, uh, teaching so many workshops, meeting so many people, spreading the culture in so many ways. Do you feel the same? I feel, <clears throat> I feel like like they said the yin yang, yang about just the boo, yeah. but it's not. I don't blame just the boo. Mm -hmm. I blame the people that come to just the boo mm -hmm. because people come for only the battle. If you really want to learn, stay, because that the dance is what's where everybody really learns. Mm -hmm. When you stay and the the ciphers that's going on. In the parties that's going on, the people once they lose the battle, they lose the pre-selection, they go home. Yeah. They didn't come for They're not supporting. They're not the supporting the event. They didn't mm. come for that. They came just to win. To see slaughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some do get slaughtered, but <laughs> before they even make it. <laughs> There's a lot of flat so, going on, but yeah. How important is uh um Juice the boot to the culture. 
I'm just naming it because it's yeah, one of the biggest me, right now. For me, it's very important. Right. Very important because it brings everybody together, brings everybody to one place. When you have 18,000 people in an arena cheering yeah. dance, you know it's important. Yeah, you have people just there for dance. Usually it's places there for singing concerts, people to watch an artist. Everybody's there for dance. So I think it's very important. In 10 years. In yeah. 10 years? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it has been around for 10 years, ten years, ten years, years now. Yeah. 11 oh, years. Okay. Yeah. Like from, years. No, it's been in existence. From, from yeah. 200 people to 18,000 people. I was there right. the second year of just the yeah. 2003. The margin, yeah. When it was in a little small gym. Yeah, it was like two or 300 people. Yeah. How, uh, how do you see the hip hop now, from now, 10 years later? Well, if it's, for me, if it keep going on the track it's going, you won't see hip hop. E hum. And a lot of contests, they don't play hip hop They don't hip -hop play hip hop songs. They play strictly instrumental. Or loops and or a lot dubstep. of dubstep. You don't really hear hip hop. Let's play classical and do ballet. <laughs> and then when you watch the dances, you don't really see the first element rocking. Well, first, let's stop right here. Um, in the contest, if you play hip hop, and you force the people to dance to hip hop, they will do hip hop. What you're playing is instrumentals and dubstep and all this other nonsense. And what you're getting is, uh, I don't even know what you're getting. It's not hip hop. It's not a reflection of the culture of hip hop. Um, let's be clear, we know what hip hop is. My man has his hat turned backwards, that's from hip hop. Everybody in here has on Nikes, that's from hip hop. You have on a t-shirt, you hanging it low, that's from hip hop. So we know what hip hop looks like, we know what it sounds like, but you know, the the relevant argument that people make today is, oh, I'm evolving, I've, 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 I'm changing, I'm doing my own thing. In order to do your own thing, you have to know who you are and where you come from. So in order to move forward, you have to know where you're moving forward from. So uh, yeah, if we could get people to actually you know, dance to, uh, and let's dance to the music, please. You know, this offbeat thing is 2012. There is no excuse for being yeah. offbeat. Really? <laughs> really? really? Watch it, wait, wait. Watching the pre-selection today was like watching drive-by pop. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. You were standing right there. I was I was right there, and you know, it, in certain places, I didn't even look because then you just yeah. But that's that's how it is. But you know. But wait, wait. Some people get a getaway pass. Why? Because I think there's a big rule that should be changed in the pre-selection. We need a top sixteen. You don't have sixteen. You got a top three. <laughs> if you stop, see the problem is if you stop making us pick a top sixteen. When they're they will start going to learn what they're supposed to learn. And as long as we keep picking them, and he likes me, I guess. I don't need to go. What so, okay. we should change the rules. Is that what you're saying? For sure. I don't know about changing the rules, but I think you got to look at it. You, you call it a pre-selection, but actually it's an audition. And if you take it into, like, if you're going to audition for a video, either you're good enough to be in a video or you're not. Period. And... You know, everybody can't make it in the video. And this is the way I look at a pre-selection. So if you put the 16 number, 12, 8, or whatever you put, like he said, sometimes you don't have that. But if it's an audition for like a video, Madonna, Mariah Carey, whoever, or a tour, or a tour you got to bust your behind to be able to be a part of that. Okay, but don't forget, it's like the pre-selection audition is like the biggest moment of your event now. If people do not come to your event, people will not know about a certain culture we're supposed to drive, we're supposed to teach. If the people do not come to the event, they will not know us. Mm. They will not know you, they will not see you. On the organizer point of view, as a dancer, you want to teach people a certain culture, mm -hmm. but you have to deal with the society. The media, I'm not blaming, but also blaming because the media is bigger than you. So when I put a battle of Ijo and Capella, which is like 
top notch when it comes to house dance and I'm just naming two people I'm having 7,000 viewers in five days mm. they're gonna view the way the people dancing and they're gonna learn from that if I do not have them people in my pre-selection audition I will not have the people in my event so why are you saying well let's be clear Ijo right. and Capella mm -hmm. dance to the beat that's why you have 7,000 people in so you are day. teaching but what I'm saying is if you have a pre-selection there should be something for you to I mean pre -pre this is ridiculous it's ridiculous you have a contest there are rules you have yeah. a pre-selection there should be a criteria to what you're selecting the first and biggest rule is dance to the music if you don't dance to the music, why are you even here? Because nobody's watching you dance off beat. You're not getting 7,000 views for, you know, no, Mr. Pop, no. pop off beat. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not. You're getting those views because these people are expressing at the highest level how the music makes them feel. That should be the criteria for the pre-selection. If you can't dance to the music, don't even get on the stage. Watch, learn. Practice. So that's to do to the organizers. <laughs> I'm dead ass. I mean, Just the Boo was not built off of experimental. No. It's the biggest category in, in Holland. Mm. Well, y'all got a problem. <laughs> not really, because. Experimental? Yeah. Really? It's the biggest category in I Holland. I thought dance itself was experimental. Yeah, they are dancing. There was a hundred. Wait, wait, wait. There was a hundred entries. This this is is Listen. It. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. This is go on, go on. Wait, wait. This is the problem. This go is on. The problem. This is a problem. Y'all created something called experimental. How do you teach somebody else how to experiment with themselves? You take one <laughs> bottle with this liquid, you take another bottle with this how? liquid, and you mix them. Plus the experiment. But can, can I say something? Because sure. I think like what happened in the hip hop scene and what the way people interpreted hip hop in parts of Europe is that you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can make and what means experimental to most of the people? Why are the people entering that one? Uh, oh, there I can do what I want. I'm mm -hmm. not limited by rules. I also like. But then why I call one thing hip hop and the other experimental? experimental. What's the difference? Because they do it. They use Last I checked, too, when you post. experiment with something, you're trying to do something new. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. When, when you watch experimental, if the b-boy just want to do something else and experiment, why do everybody take off their shoes and start looking like modern dancers? Because that's what they call it at home, modern but dance. I, what I think, with, to, to elaborate on that, is that by the competition, the competition create criteria. You know, so what happens when you enter a top rock battle and you start doing power moves is they're not being counted, and there's even just did like taking points off because you're doing something that you're not supposed to do. Mm. This only happens in competitions when you're in a cipher, nobody's gonna give you rules, they just feel it or they don't feel it, exactly right. So the competition now may criteria maybe feel so narrow that when you have a, a like a, a, a broad freaking criteria like experimental that just means do whatever and that attracts people like okay so now there's no rules and if I express myself the best then that is an excuse to be lazy because oh you know I'm doing I said that at the beginning of this conversation I show up oh I'm doing my own style no you're not you wouldn't be here without the music. The music is called hip hop. The culture is called street dance. You are not here without that. So stop telling me that you're doing your own thing and you're, you know, I don't want to be bound by the rules. Then why are you here? It was a suggestion. Huh? No, I'm not saying that it's not a suggestion. I'm saying, let's be clear. Let's stop with this nonsense. IBE is, a, is, a, is an event for dancing. It's not an event to come in and roll on the floor and, and throw your arms up and say, I'm doing experimental. This is my style. That's nonsense. And, you know, I wish Bruce was here because I said this to him years ago about experimental. You got a lot of people just, that's why you got a lot of people showing up. You get more people showing up because they can do whatever the hell they want. That's great. I'm happy for you. But don't show up in the hip hop contest and then get in the experimental contest and there's no difference in what you're doing except you took off your shoes. <laughs> <laughs>
There is not a there is not a way to it. There is not a way to it. Oh, I'm it's sorry. Like, you gotta add umbrellas and no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> check. Hey, what's the other? What, what, what I do is like you know in, in Amsterdam when I'm doing Jews de Boer Amsterdam. I'm a wider experimental categories for me very important. I teach at the academy. I'm teaching house and jazz fusion and hip hop to make him understand part of the culture, the experimental category brings different dancers to a hip hop contest for them to understand that culture. When they participate, for my students in the school, they get to feel that spiritual feeling whenever you get into a cypher, which you don't just feel at school in a class. Right. So. To me, that is the positive side of having the category experimental among the hip hop, like, you know, the different styles. And every time they enter that cypher, they come back at school and they're just blown away. And every time they see the other dancers that are like hip hop dancers, they also get blown away and they understand me better whenever I'm teaching. So that is not a positive side of it. I do understand what you're saying, but I think experimental category experimental is helping a broader audience I'm, to I'm, come. I'm all for that, yeah. but what we called experimental, we called it practice. You play music, it is. you practice, you come up with new things it's by right. expanding your mind to the music. And if the music does not count, then I don't know what is the purpose of this because without the music, there is no interview, there is no IBE, there is no Just a Boo, there is no Summer Dance Forever. There is nothing without the music. <laughs> so if you're not dancing to the music and you want to be experimental, by all means do you. And I'm happy for you. But I'll be over here where the beat is. So what about contemporary dancers dancing on the music? Good for them. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be real here. I'm, I'm of African descent. My parents dance to the music. Their parents dance to the music. Our entire culture is based on socializing and the energy that comes when you get people together moving in unison to music. That is the entire basis of our existence in hip hop and street dance in general. So taking the music out of the equation is anathema to me. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, okay, I have a plastic bottle, I'm thirsty, but I don't have any water. What is the bottle? What's the use of the bottle? I need the water. For me, the bottle is useless. The bottle is the event, but the, the water is the music. Without the water, it's just a plastic fucking bottle. Excuse me, my French as we said. I saw experimental last night. Okay, I wasn't here last night. Let's was talk the, about the pre-party. I was at the pre-party. I saw experimental. <laughs> People pop into Marvin Gaye's sexual healing. <laughs> Are you serious? For yeah. those of you who don't know, it's a slow song. It's a very slow <laughs> song. Like you were supposed song. to make babies to sexual Do that song. Like you can't pop and make babies. Well, you you could pop and make babies. I have to show this. He will do a demonstration on it for you. Let's move. Us. Get up, get up, get up. Girl, get up. Let's tonight. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. wait till I left. And it was on the. Ooh. <laughs> really? This is what experimental is doing. I wouldn't call. This is what experimental is doing. I would call. This is what a lot of people who have been taught by certain people that didn't teach the right foundation, didn't teach the right culture, mm. is doing. Mm -hmm. You cannot blame that on experimental. No, yeah. you, can't. you can't. You know I'm what I'm saying? Blame it. So now we're coming back to the importance of foundations. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Back in the days, yes. when you will be dancing, mm -hmm. you will be dancing with different styles. You, you would not have, I'm a popper or I'm a, I'm, I'm a house dancer, I'm a hip hop dancer. You will be dancing. Right. And, and, and the thing that brought me back to that was when I saw Junior Boogie 
dancing. He was just breaking, popping, different. He would be doing everything in his dance. And that was for me hip hop. So how do you feel now that we have everything in boxes and create poppers dancing on Marvin Gaye? <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, uh, as I teach in all of my classes and every time in every interview or whatever, we don't live in a box. We live in a cipher. That's right. So, um, but it's there. Everything is in the box. Yeah. yeah. If you allow them to put you in that box, then you're stuck in that box. But a society has become a box. Yes. Uh, listen, um, it's like a super Al Albert Einstein was in a box and he said no. Um, there are not many Albert Einsteins. Hey. There are not many Buddhist tracks. <laughs> there are not many links. Not you should be trying to get there because that's the whole that's the whole idea. You don't want to be sheep. You want to be the wolf. Ooh, that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but you have leaders and you have followers. Yeah. And most of the people that are in the way. As well, <laughs> so the leaders get them out of the way for the followers. You to have get leaders the right and side. you have followers, and then most. My father taught me this when I was ten years old. He said, "You have leaders, you have followers, and most people are just in the way." And the idea is to find your way around these people because they're what's deterring you. Sometimes you lead, sometimes you follow, but you never stay stagnant, and that's the problem. Again. Do you want to be the sheep, or do you want to be the wolf, or, you or want to be the do you want to be the, the shepherd? Because the shepherd moves the sheep and the wolf. Ooh. So where does that put you? <laughs> In control. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but okay, how do you feel about the boxes? Okay, we're having the oh. category locking, popping, house. Oh, Hip hop. If you sign up for that category, do that category. Y'all don't have an all style category. And that's a, well, I'm not going to talk about all style. If you're in a locking battle, you should lock. know how to lock. Plain yeah. and simple. You should know what that entails. You should know the vocabulary of locking. You should know the technique behind locking. You should know the style. You should know the cap, your own character. That is clear. That is clear. But how do you feel about the boxes? I mean, it, I don't look at it as a box per se when I'm dancing because, again, for me it's dance first, style second. So if I enter a locking contest, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna lock, but I'm gonna include uh, all of the things that make me as a dancer in that style. So while I'm locking, I might throw a wave with a wrist roll. I might, you know, throw uh, Uncle Sam and, and I, I might do double speed Uncle Sam's and then I might tick them. You know, I might include, I might, you know, wrist roll and do, you know, the Applejack or I, so many things that I can do in combination, but still remain in that style of locking. You know, I'm not limiting myself to, I have to lock only this way. Because locking in of itself and all of these dancers are freestyle dancers first before their styles. And that's what gets lost. You have, you know, a lot of people that are, you know, uh, teachers who will tell you that you have to do this this way. No, you have to learn it this way. That's the basis of it, the foundation. What you're supposed to do is take that brick and put another brick on top of that and another brick on top of that and build your own house. So. Yeah. No, I said, yeah, I experiment. Totally agree. Ooh, experiment. Experimental. So you experiment wow. with, with the styles. So you're cool with the boxes. I'm cool what, with the what boxes makes you, to a certain I mean, extent. No, who, I'm, I'm, actually I'm not cool with the I was just going to say this. Um, the, the way I see it is that I'm a dancer, but people know me for dancing house. And so when they see me dancing to hip hop, they're like, wow, you, you dance to hip hop? You like hip hop? I'm like, yeah, of course. I started with hip hop. That's the first thing I heard before I ever heard a house song, <coughs> you know. But for me, I think it's about your life experience. So whatever you were into before, you got into what you're into now. Because most people don't just start out with locking or popping. 
they're, they're actually doing something before that in your house, in your home, whatever you're doing, which is cultural, whatever you, like Buddha said, you need to bring that along with you and that's what you add into what, whatever, whatever you're learning, whatever style you're learning. That creates And you shouldn't character. allow anyone to tell you that you're a pop or you're a locker. You should say that you're a dancer first. And like he said, the music is first, so the music is the key, right? Because if the music changes, you should be able to change with the music. But you could do different styles or different type of music. Of course. of course. Of course. But that doesn't mean you have to. But that doesn't mean that you should. I mean, <coughs> what happens is, again, <coughs> dance first, style second. Because a dancer encompasses all of those boxes. A dancer can jump from box to box. A dancer can kick all of the boxes out because a dancer is in the circle. That's right. You fit all of those boxes in that cipher and you jump wherever you want to go. You can jump out of that cipher and into something totally different if you dance first. But if you lose the dancer part of it, then you are, yes, you're in that box. You're a popper. When people see you, they know, oh, he's a popper. But if they don't play uh, popping music per se, then what are you going to do? If they start playing break beats, you can't pop. You're limiting yourself. If you dance, you can dance. You can pop to break beats. You can pop to classical music. Yeah, I love you guys. Exactly. <laughs> Ooh. Sexy popping. <laughs> Sexy popping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Whole, the whole reason you talk about <clears throat> boxes, I think, comes from techniques. Because dancing, that doesn't, you know, dancing is something else than just a technique. That's what you teach in class. But when we talk about a box, usually, basically what you mean is that every dance has a style or a format, which it by itself is not limiting at all. Like Buddha said, it, that's a foundation. If it becomes limiting if you just do a technique and you stay with the technique and you say, that's the only technique I've ever learned. Mm -hmm. And, oh shit, they put on a different song. Well, I stick with my technique. Right. By boxes, I mean putting dance in categories. That's what I mean. Well, like I think I, you it's, know. it's just what you by boxes. He means labels. You put a label on something so that you can understand it better. It's just like this is a baseball cap, but my man has on a baseball cap too. What's the difference? His is a snapback, but it's still a baseball cap. You know, so it's just a label so you can understand it better. But that doesn't mean that you are that label, you know? And as far as technique, I mean, technique defines a dance to a certain extent, but you can apply techniques from other styles into different dances to, you know, make that particular dance better. Case in point, if you uh, apply the point in ballet, you know, uh, in your feet, if you apply that point technique in floating or in gliding, you learn to glide a whole lot better because you can stay on your toes. So it depends on the dancer and how serious they are about that particular label, that particular style. You have, for me, my personal experience is in order to do a style, you have to live it. Otherwise, you're just doing it half ass. So if you, you know, if you say you love locking, then you should live locking. So that when you, if, if, if you're in a locking cipher, you should look like you've locked all of your life. If I jump into a b-boy cipher, I should look like I've been b-boying forever. If I jump Ooh, into a pop that's, cipher, that's, I should look like I've concept. been popping forever. Not like I'm trying, ooh, I got a wave. You know, cause it's on my list though. It's a little promo right there. That's, that's, that's my list. <laughs> Pop that forever. <laughs> Be born forever. <laughs> you know, there, there we go. Now you get to meet the judges <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> Don King right there. Come with you, Potter. Don King's at work. That's right. How do you, um, where do you see yourselves 10 years from now? Ooh, I'm just worrying about tomorrow. <clears throat> yeah, but I'm talking 10 years. <clears throat> I can't tell you 10 years. I just hope to see everybody tomorrow. I hope to be breathing and shut up. Truth be told, to, mm -hmm. to give you a, a real, real answer, I didn't see myself here 10 years ago. 
20 years ago, I didn't see myself we never even wherever. Thought, We've never, never thought that any of this would be at this point. I get to dance on the stage, and you're going to pay me. And get free He had to explain it to me three times before I actually got it. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I'll be here. What time do you need me here? <laughs> really? okay. I was there half an hour early. I wasn't even on CP time. I was a proper. <laughs> you know, because you was going to pay me. So it's just like, from that to here now, I'm sitting in, in, in Holland explaining about dancing. It's just, you know, never planned this out. Never saw it going where it was. And giving the utmost respect to the most high for it getting from that point to here. So wherever we go from here on, 10 years from now, if we're blessed enough to get that, it's just a blessing no matter what happens. I mean, also to go from, I used to live on the first floor and right right next to my window was a basketball court. And in the basketball court, they used to have a jam. And this is where basically hip hop started for me. They used to knock on my window so they can use the power court, you know, so we can they can plug up. So I would ask my mom, mom, they're gonna they're gonna um do a party tonight, you know they're having a jam, and she said, well how late are they gonna be out there? I think to one o'clock. So she would give the okay. I take the plug in, plug it into the wall, and then we would have the party. And that was like my first experience to find out what hip hop was, and it was just like either someone's birthday, a holiday, or some type of celebration. Party. It wasn't any clubs for us to go to at like thirteen or twelve years old. You know what I mean? And to go from that to this, to me, is amazing. To see people all over the world wanting to be involved and wanting to know about what this whole culture is all about. I, uh, sorry for asking so many questions. Please do. <laughs> I love questions. Would, would you consider the clubs a better uh, school than, than teaching classes? I would think... I used to think that way, but I don't think that way anymore because um, for some in this time, they need the, I think they need the structure of a class. For us, we didn't have classes. The club was our class. That's where we learned everything. That's where we practiced everything. We left it there. We went home and we came back. But now, you know, too many people it's, standing around. Yeah, and not you don't have that club culture anymore. You don't have access to different times. Yeah, yeah. So I think the class structure is fine, but I always tell people take what you learn in class and go somewhere and apply it.